Hey everyone, Wayne Fox. Sorry about the get up. I uh, just got off the golf course. My hair is a disaster, so I'm going to leave the hat on. Hopefully the light gets underneath the brim. Anyway, as I came home, I discovered that this had been delivered on my front door. This is the CalDigit TS4 Thunderbolt hub slash dock. Uh, I reviewed the CalDigit 3 as well as the OWC Thunderbolt docks previously, and they're both really solid products. Currently, I use the OWC version, and this uh, I use both the OWC dock as well as Thunderbolt hub. I have both of those, and there is a big difference between a dock and a hub. Sometimes the device does both things, and sometimes it does one or the other. Uh, this kind of does both of those things, and most Thunderbolt uh, devices either are a hub or a dock, but this is the only one I know that actually accomplishes both. So I wanted to review it. I thought, well, I'm going to open it up real quick. I like to do box openings. I don't know why everybody else does them. And then I'm going to use it for a couple of weeks. And after I get done, I'll finish up the video, review what the features are, my thoughts of using it, and what I like about it, or maybe don't like about it. Let's take a look at what's in the box. Okay, hopefully I can get this. Problem with box openings, if you miss it on the first take, you kind of mess it up. Anyway, I don't think there's uh, too too much exciting about it. First of all, the device itself. And I believe, I don't have the original CalDigit 3 anymore. I sold that. But I believe this device is a little bigger, a little hard to get out of the box. It's built and designed quite similarly. Uh, it is, uh, from what I can remember, it's slightly larger, but maybe not a lot. Uh, it, I think, is designed the same way. It can either be sit on your desktop or somewhere in either the vertical or the horizontal uh, I'm bet betting I find some feet in here that let me do that let's just take a look there's the power supply yep and here's the rib feet and I can put the ribs uh, either on the bottom and put it up this way or on the other bottom and put it up that way comes with a Thunderbolt 4 cable to connect to your computer and of course the power supply so not a lot to it. I'm going to get it hooked up here in a few minutes and take out the OWC versions to see if this accomplishes both. So I think I can replace the Thunderbolt hub that I have as well as the Thunderbolt dock and just have one device do, every, uh, do, do everything. It's got extra USB-C ports on it, a lot of extra ports. So when I get to the review, we'll actually label those out and I'll talk about whether it worked in my case. So I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Well, I'm back. Been more than two weeks. Sorry about that. I uh, went on vacation to California, caught COVID. And even though I didn't get very sick, I lost my voice and it take, it's taken about three weeks for that to clear up. Still not totally normal, but anyway, at least I can get this video done now. Let's first talk about why you might want a Thunderbolt 4 dock over Thunderbolt 3, what the differences are. Thunderbolt is a multiplex version of the PCI Express bus from your computer along with DisplayPort. So PCI Express extends the PCI bus externally from the computer. So anything that PCI can do, you can do externally with PCI Express. That's why Thunderbolt is so robust. You can basically do anything with it, turn anything just like you can inside your computer. The difference between three and four is purely specifications. Thunderbolt is an Intel technology. They require all devices to be certified. So the differences are in the specifications and that's really the, uh, what we're gonna talk about real quick. So first of all, Thunderbolt 3 was only required to support a single 4K display. It could support more than that, and some devices did, many devices did. But Thunderbolt 4 requires full support of two 4K displays or one 8K display. As we get into displays that have higher and higher resolution, 5K displays are becoming somewhat commonplace now. This could be an important factor in a decision on what type of dock to buy. So while the total bandwidth of Thunderbolt 3 was 40 gigabits per second, the PCI Express bus or part of that connection was only required to be a 16 gigabit per second uh, data path. Thunderbolt 4 requires that data path for the PCI Express be double to 32 gigabits per second. That probably is fairly important if you have a few downstream high speed SSD type devices for your storage. For example, I have some that are built with four different SSDs all on a RAID 0. So they're they're really, really fast. Uh, because there's several, that extra speed down that PCI bus might be important. Related to that was the speed that the cables were capable of. Under Thunderbolt 3, a 0.5 meter cable, so what is that, about 19, 20 inches, 
was capable of delivering the full 40 gigabit per second bandwidth that Thunderbolt was capable of. But once you got longer than that, if you went to a one meter or two meter cable, you then only was able to get 20 gigabits per second rather than the 40. So it cut your speed in half. I actually wasn't aware of that. I've got two meter cables going to my devices. And now I've got to make sure I get Thunderbolt 4 cables. That should help. Uh, the devices themselves are only Thunderbolt 3, but the hub or the dock, excuse me, is Thunderbolt 4. So I hope that helps because under Thunderbolt 4, that requirement is the two meter cable has to be able to maintain that 40 gig per second bandwidth. So all Thunderbolt cables from two from half a meter up to two meters are capable of delivering the full 40 gigabit per second bandwidth that Thunderbolt's designed for. A couple of more minor things, a Thunderbolt 4 device must support wake from sleep. If you have an attached keyboard or mouse, not sure how big a deal that is. I've used wireless keyboards and mice for a long time. I think most people do. But if you prefer a wired keyboard or mouse, now the device must support it. Now, Thunderbolt 3 devices might have supported that. One thing to understand is that these are the minimum requirements of the device. Wasn't required on a Thunderbolt 3, but that doesn't mean it wasn't implemented. I suppose it was still possible to have it. One other thing that uh, Thunderbolt 4 devices are required to do is supply charging power through the host port to the computer. And that can be up to 100 watts, both USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 allow up to 100 watts of power to be transferred through that cable to the host computer. In Thunderbolt 3, it wasn't required. Now, I don't know any docks or hubs that didn't supply some charging power. Some of them just weren't adequate enough. The nice thing about the CalDigit is it's full 98 watts to the host computer, which is almost as much as it's uh, allowed to do, and plenty for even the new MacBook Pros. So what is probably the most useful change is the ability to hook up devices without staying to a strict daisy chain. Under Thunderbolt 3, you had to daisy chain the devices, and if you wanted to hook a DisplayPort uh, monitor up or a USB uh, device, it always had to be the last one in the chain. A lot of times problematic. For example, my last devices up here on a shelf behind me take probably a 30-foot cable, 25-foot cable to reach my display if I wanted to use it. So what Thunderbolt 4 does is it changes that and a device can have up to four Thunderbolt ports, one to the host computer, but three that were downstream. So here you can see that I've got the monitor connected directly to the hub and I've got a chain of three hard drives connected to the hub. I've also got another smaller hard drive or SSD drive connected to the hub. So adding this capability removes the strict daisy chain requirement as long as your dock slash hub support it. And one thing it doesn't change is the amount of supported devices. Each Thunderbolt bus can support up to six devices. And from what I can determine, I, I asked CalDigit directly and the tech replied back that the device itself counts as one of those devices. So you can only have five other devices connected to the CalDigit or any other hub or dock. But the nice part is, is that now you can connect a little SSD to one of those ports. You can connect your display to one. That's what I've done. My display is into the, the second port on the CalDigit. We'll see that in a minute. So I think this is a pretty significant change. It'll make hubs uh, more commonplace. It'll make, I think you'll see a lot of Thunderbolt docks will add this capability, maybe even better than CalDigit did because they only added uh, one port. So they have three total Thunderbolt ports. I'm not sure why they didn't go ahead and add that fourth Thunderbolt port so you could connect two other devices. That would have really been nice, especially if it would be on the front. Uh, I have some small SSDs, and it'd be great if one of those USB-C ports on the front was actually a Thunderbolt port and USB-C. So before we get into the CalDigit TS4 and the ports that it supplies, let's real quick make sure we understand the difference between a hub and a dock. A lot of people use those terms interchangeably. Some devices function as both. For example, most USB hubs, or excuse me, most USB docks are also hubs. You have a USB connection to the computer, you got four or five USB ports on the device. Well, that's what a hub is. But most USB uh, uh, docks also have HDMI, SD cards, uh, other types of connections. So they serve as both a hub and a dock. Most Thunderbolt devices, for example, this one from OWC, it's not a hub, it's strictly a dock. You have one connection to the host computer, one connection that passes that through. You don't gain any Thunderbolt ports, so it's not a hub. You do gain all these other ports, and that's what qualifies it as a dock. Now, the CalDigit TS4 is one of the first ones 
that is sort of a hybrid. Even though it's mainly a dock, it does function as sort of as a mini hub. And that's kind of what sets it apart. Now, I think you will see more of these going on. Um, I'm interested to see what Pluggable is going to do with theirs. Theirs might even be a little bit better. But let's now go over the ports of the Cal Digit so we can understand what it offers and what's a little different between that and the original TS3. First, you'll notice we have one connection to the host computer. And it's a Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 connection. And it supplies up to 98 watts of charging power. So plenty of charging power for the new MacBook Pros, the Pro uh, the Mac <laughs> M1 Max, M1 Pro, uh, too many pros and maxes and all this with Apple's naming technology. You'll notice how ever it has two downstream ports and that's kind of one of the big differences. That second port is really handy. In my case, I've got my display plugged into it. I don't have to run it all the way to the last one on my chain. I wish they would have gone ahead and put all three of the ports that are possible under this specification. That really is something, I'm, I'm not sure why they didn't. That would have made the most sense. But that's why this functions sort of as a hub, but it's mainly a dock. Let's look at the other ports it offers. It offers an SD card slot, but it now adds a micro SD card slot that wasn't in the Cal Digit 3. Has the same audio combo jack in the front, but you'll notice it has an audio in and an audio out on the back. So it offers a little bit better way to take speakers out or to put audio in. Now, one thing that if you plug something into the front jack, that disables the back jacks. So you can't use them both, you can only use one or the other. It has a total of eight USB ports instead of seven in the original Cal Digit. All of the USB ports, there are five USB-A and three USB-C, and they're all uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabit per second capable ports. They all supply um, seven and a half watts of charging power, except one in the front supplies a full 20 watts of charging power. So this is capable of charging uh, a phone, uh, an iPad, or uh, some kind of tablet. Uh, very, very handy because it's in the front. Again, we have DisplayPort, which is 1.4. In the original Cal Digit TS3, that's only rated to be one DisplayPort 1 1.2. We have an Ethernet port, which is 2.5 gigabit Ethernet versus the Cal Digit 3, which is only 1 gigabit Ethernet. We lose the optical audio out port that was in the original Cal Digit 3, so for some people, that might be a problem. I don't know that it's a big deal. But overall, uh, it's a, it's much more robust. And because of that extra Thunderbolt slash USB-C port, uh, like I said, all of the Thunderbolt 4 ports can also support full USB 4. Uh, because of that, it's very uh, much more flexible, I think. And a lot of people will be able to use it much better. Let me just list out all the differences real quick on the screen. And then we'll wrap this thing up. The difference is uh, CalDigit is a Thunderbolt 3 device. The host port supplies 87 watts to the host computer, whereas the Thunderbolt 4 of the CalDigit TS4 supplies 98 watts to the host computer. The TS3 only has one downstream Thunderbolt connection, whereas the TS4 has two downstream Thunderbolt connections. They both supply 15 watts of bus power. To me, that's a big deal because now you can plug an SSD card in there. You don't have to find the last device. Or in my case, I've got my display plugged into that second port. And I've got my other display plugged into the HDMI port. So both displays are being driven out of the same uh, hub. The TS3 had a total of seven USB ports. All but one were 3.1 Gen 1 ports, so only 5 gigabits per second support. The one USB was uh, USB 3.2 Gen or 3.1 Gen 2 all this USB specs are wacky to remember. Anyway, it was capable of 10 gigabits per second. The TS4 has eight USB ports. All are 3.2 Gen 2 ports, all capable of 10 gigabit per second bandwidth. And one of the front USB-C ports actually has 20 watts of charging power. So you can charge your phone, your tablet, uh, some other device, uh, actually quite handy. Both devices have front audio in and out combined, but the TS4 adds an audio in and audio out on the back, which is kind of nice. Now, the TS4 loses the optical audio out, which was on the TS3. TS3 has an optical audio out, which I, some people that might be uh, useful. I don't know. The TS3 had 1 gigabit Ethernet versus 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on the TS4. The TS3 only supported DisplayPort 1.2, whereas the TS4 dis supports DisplayPort 1.4. The TS3 has an SD card slot. It's UHS-2. The TS4 has that and adds a micro SD card slot. 
I'm not sure that's a big deal because when you buy a micro SD card, you get an adapter. And for me, it's easier to put it in the adapter and then put that in a normal slot and try to stick that little card in. Uh, but it might be helpful for some people. The last thing is the TS3 supported up to one 5K display or two 4K displays if the host computer supported it, whereas the TS4 supply, uh, supports one 8K display or two 4K displays if the host supports it. So those are all the key differences. A couple of problems that I've had with it, the when the computer goes to sleep, the external storage devices get disconnected. To get around that, I was able to go in and tell my computer to not go to sleep, just turn the displays off, kind of a workaround that they suggested. I've tried a couple of other things. They're aware of that, and I'm assuming there will be a firmware fix that will resolve that. I'll make a, a note in the comments below on the top if that actually happens, or I'll pin a, a, a reply to the top. The other problem I've had is I have a USB um, hub. It's a 3.0 hub, so it's a little older. has like eight ports in it, and I have quite a few USB devices. And I noticed that when I plug that into the CalDigit, two of those devices didn't show up anymore. I have a little um, Logitech webcam on the top of my computer. That wasn't there anymore. I have a Bose uh, sound system, which connected USB into that, and that didn't show up anymore. When I connect that hub into my OWC Thunderbolt hub uh, through its one 3.2 port, everything works fine. So there's something amiss. Now it is an older hub and maybe I just need to upgrade. I am gonna contact them, but a little bit of a problem. And workaround for me was fortunately that was able to work because if I didn't have that other port, I would have had to have figured out some other solution. The whole goal I had was to only have to plug in one device into my computer. Unfortunately for me, I do have another device. I have more than the, to be honest, I have more than five Thunderbolt devices altogether. I've got four Thunderbolt uh, storage devices down line. I've got a Thunderbolt um, display uh, captured into my computer. And then I've got um, a Thunderbolt display. So that gives me six. So the CalDigit wouldn't have been able to support all of them anyway. I can either plug one into one of the other ports of my computer because there are three Thunderbolt ports on that. And that's what I've chosen to do. I've actually plugged my hub into one. And because the computer has three separate Thunderbolt independent buses, so the Mac itself can support up to 18 devices off the Thunderbolt, uh, the new M1, uh, M1 Max Pro Mac, M <laughs> MacBook Pro M1 Max. Um, and so I just chose, I just plug in two instead of one. Works pretty good. Well, I hope that I covered that. I'm a little rusty on these gear reviews. I don't do a lot of them anymore. There's so many people that get so in-depth at them. Uh, but from a practical point of view, I just like to offer my opinion. Uh, it is a very solid product. I think you'll be happy with it. I am excited to try the pluggable version when it comes out. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate you watching. And if you want to subscribe to the channel down there below, that'd be great. Finally got over 5,000 subscribers, which is, you know, a pittance compared to a lot of them. But, you know, when I first started this thing, I didn't think I'd ever even get to 1,000. So appreciate those all that watch. Hopefully they're somewhat entertaining. Till next time, see ya.